My name is Richard Thomas, and I have the pleasure of interviewing Professor Chris Griffiths. Well, thank you for that, Richard. So I guess there's two things. One is that um, psoriasis is a disease that has lent itself very well to the translational approach. So understanding the pathomechanisms mechanisms of psoriasis, identifying key cytokine pathways, you know, particularly interleukin-17 and interleukin-23, have allowed us to develop molecules which can target those cytokines to improve um, the quality of life of our patients. And I think that you know, with anti-R17, anti-R23 approaches, which will come into the market in about a year's time, we will see or be able to say for the first time to our patients, we can promise you almost complete clearance of your psoriasis. I don't think we've ever been able to do that before. Not just complete clearance you know, over 16 weeks, but over the long term, because obviously it's the long term treatment that we're looking for. Well, it's a good question about, you know, these are expensive treatments, psoriasis doesn't kill many people directly, but I'd counter that by saying, well, psoriasis is life ruining. It occurs for the first time, usually in the teenage years, and an individual's life is forever changed because of that disease. And by that I mean, we know that there's a significant cost to society when an individual has psoriasis. You know, in the UK, it may be 26 days a year lost from work for a patient with psoriasis. It costs the UK over a billion pounds a year from presenteeism and sickness absence. These are big numbers. And even if they are at work, you know, it's not productive. But a lot of them are not actually getting gain gainful employment. A lot of them are not getting to the level of education that they would have got to otherwise a whole series of reasons around their psoriasis. So if you can manage psoriasis effectively early on and maybe prevent some of the changes which may lead to psoriatic arthritis, maybe able to prevent them developing cardiovascular disease or diabetes or stroke, then you can make them a very productive, looking at it just the pure numbers and the way to counter that argument, the pure numbers stack up is that you can then make the productive members of society and that investment is worth it. So what are you talking what you're talking about here Richard is stratified medicine or personalized medicine. So you know medicine as you know as well as I do is not a one size fits all agenda. All of us are patients, all of us want to have the doctor is going to credit us on the best treatment for us and our psoriasis first time. Now that may sound far-fetched, but in the world of oncology, all oncology drugs now, Herceptin being a good example, come with what's known as a companion diagnostic. So with some biological testing, you can say this patient is going to respond best to this drug. So with stratified medicine, you can use clinical, genetic, immune information on that individual, maybe from a blood test, maybe from a very small two millimeter punch biopsy, which will allow you, as, a, as the dermatologist to say to the patient, well, you have this sort of psoriasis, because it's not one disease, it's several diseases. This psoriasis, which will do very best on this particular drug. So that's the first. We, I think we're going to be able to do that. It, we can only do it now because we can start to combine all what's called multi-omics platforms, proteomics, immunology, genomics, phenomics, which is the sort of the phenotype of the patient. Put all, all the information together to get in a sort of Star Trek sort of scenario okay, you have this sort of psoriasis, this information, you're going to do best on, say, methotrexate even. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the drug. It's also the lifestyle management that goes with that. And that's very important. So it's understanding that they might be depressed. It's understanding that if they lose weight, that of its own will improve their response to a drug or may even improve their psoriasis itself. Stopping drinking will actually improve psoriasis. Stopping smoking also will improve psoriasis. Exercise, diet, all of those things of their own make a difference. But together, with these modern drugs, with a phenomenal opportunity to get patients clear of psoriasis and that it's no longer interfering with their quality of life. Yeah, I do think it's achievable. I think that the lifestyle management is achievable with motivational interviewing and other techniques. 
and also I believe, as I, as I mentioned earlier, with multi-omics platforms and the ability to integrate that data and analyze it using what's called machine learning will give us that algorithmic approach which will allow us to get them on the right treatment for them, whatever that might be, the first time. So uh, it, it, it's, def it's definitely going to happen. Motivation interviewing is where, you know, so rather than me just telling you to do something which you're not going to respond to, you're going to say, look, I don't want to do that. It's, it's getting the patient and the healthcare practitioner on the same side, so they both have the same goals. So one of the examples I used in my lecture was around weight, weight loss. So if I, you know, we do know that obesity itself is a, a driver for developing psoriasis, but losing weight is a crucial thing. So if I just told you to lose weight, you're going to say, oh, forget it, I haven't got time to do that. But if I sort of make you think about well, why it might be important to lose weight, it makes a difference. So I say, how much would you like to lose weight on a score from zero to 10, where 10 is the most? And you might say four. And I'd counter that by saying, well, that's interesting. Why isn't it less than four? So immediately you say, well, I have heard that, you know, being overweight reduces my, you know, increases my chance of getting diabetes or me getting arthritis, so perhaps there is something I could, should be doing about that. So immediately the balance has shift, shifted and the patient themselves is starting to think, okay, well, there's things I could do to help myself here. That's, that, that's what motivation is about. It's about, it's about the same techniques used for stopping smoking, stopping alcohol consumption, etc. Yes, exactly. It's got to be an individual. We're all individuals. Yeah, yeah. And that's the point. You can't just put it all into the same package. You know? And that's with dosing of biologics as well. At the moment, as you know, there tends to be fixed dosing. Yeah, yeah. This is the dose. This is the, this is the frequency. That might be true for sort of the general group, but actually for the individual, it might be, well, you might to have double the dose. We might need to have the, the treatment every four weeks instead of every two weeks. Or, every, or once a week instead of two weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's tailored to you and your needs, and everyone metabolizes these drugs differently. I think the, the key thing is that psoriasis isn't a single disease, it's several. Mm -hmm.